Uh, we'll do a read through first. Okay. And then introduce the author and then see what others think about the story. Thank you. Yeah. Can yeah. you see my screen? Yeah, it's good. Perfect. Yeah. I don't scroll until I get to the last. So otherwise, if you scroll while I'm reading, I lose track. Okay. Do you want to share? Uh, it's yeah, fine, I mean, right? Yeah, I, I can use. Either way, it's fine. I have it open too, so it's fine. We'll go with this. It's perfectly okay. okay. All right. The last question by Isaac Asimov, 1956. The last question was asked for the first time, half in jest, on May 21st, 2061, at a time when humanity first stepped into the light. The question came about as a result of a $5 bet over highballs, and it happened this way. Alexander Adele and Bertram Lupoff were two of the faithful attendants of Multibat. As well as any human beings could, they knew what lay behind the cold, clicking, flashing face, miles and miles of face of that giant computer. They had at, at least a vague notion of the general plan of relays and circuits that had long since grown past the point where any single human could possibly have a firm grip of the whole. Multibac was self-adjusting and self-correcting. It had to be, for nothing human could adjust and correct it quickly enough or even adequately enough. So Adele and Lupov attended the monstrous giant only lightly and superficially, yet as well as any men could. They fed it data, adjusted questions to its needs, and translated the answers that were issued. Certainly they, and all others like them, were fully entitled to share in the glory that was Multivax. For decades, Multivax had helped design the ships and plot the trajectories that enabled man to reach the moon, Mars, and Venus. But past that, Earth's poor resources could not support the ships. Too much energy was needed for the long trips. Earth exploited its coal and uranium with increasing efficiency, but there was only so much of both. But slowly, Multivac learned enough to answer deeper questions more fundamentally. And on May 14, 2061, what had been theory became fact. The energy of the sun was stored, converted, and utilized directly on a planet-wide scale. All Earth turned off its burning coal, its fissioning uranium, and flipped the switch that connected all of it to a small station, one mile in diameter, circling the Earth at half the distance to the moon all Earth ran by invisible beams of sun power. Seven days had not sufficed to dim the glory of it, and Adele and Lupov finally managed to escape from the public function and to meet in quiet where no one would think of looking for them, in the deserted underground chambers where portions of the mighty buried body of Multivac showed, unattended, idling, sorting data with contented, lazy clickings. Multivac, too, had earned its vacation, and the boys appreciated that. They had no intention, originally, of disturbing it. They had brought a bottle with them, and their only concern at the moment was to relax in the company of each other and the bottle. It's amazing when you think of it, said Adele. His broad face had lines of weariness in it, and he stirred his drink slowly with a glass rod, watching the cubes of ice slur clumsily about. All the energy we can possibly ever use for free. Enough energy, if we wanted to draw on it, to melt all Earth into a big drop of impure liquid iron and still never miss the energy so used. All the energy we could ever use, forever and forever and forever. Lupov cocked his head sideways. He had a trick of doing that when he wanted to be contrary, and he wanted to be contrary now, partly because he had had to carry the ice and glassware. Not forever, he said. Oh, hell, just about forever. Till the sun runs down, Bert. That's not forever. All right, then. Billions and billions of years. 20 billion, maybe? Are you satisfied? Lupov put his fingers through his thinning hair as though to reassure himself that some was still left and sipped gently at his own drink. 20 billion years isn't forever. Will, it will last our time, won't it? So would the coal and uranium. All right. But now we can hook up each individual spaceship, the solar station, and it can go to Pluto and back a million times without ever worrying about fuel. You can't do that on coal and uranium. Ask Multivac if you don't believe me. I don't have to ask Multivac. I know that. Then stop running down what Multivac's done for us, said Adele, blazing up. It did all right. 
Who says it didn't? What I say is that a sun would last forever. That's all I'm saying. We're safe for 20 billion years, but then what? Lupo pointed a slightly shaky finger at the other. And don't say we'll switch to another sun. There was silence for a while. Adele put his glass to his lips only occasionally, and Lupov's eyes slowly closed. They rested. Then Lupov's eyes snapped open. You're thinking we'll switch to another sun when ours is done, aren't you? I'm not thinking. Sure you are. You're weak on logic. That's the trouble with you. You're like the guy in the story who was caught in a sudden shower and who ran to a grove of trees and got under one. He wasn't worried, you see, because he figured when one tree got wet through, he would just get under another one. I get it, said Adele. Don't shout. When the sun is done, the other stars will be gone too. Darn right they will, muttered Lupov. It all had a beginning in the original cosmic explosion, whatever that was. And it'll all have an end when all the stars run down. Some run down faster than others. Hell, the giants won't last 100 million years. The sun will last 20 billion years. Maybe the dwarfs will last 100 billion for all the good they are. But just give us a trillion years and everything will be dark. Entropy has to increase to maximum. That's all. I know all about entropy, said Adele, standing on his dignity. The hell you do. I know as much as you do. Then you know everything has got to run down someday. All right, who says they won't? You did, you poor sap. You said we had all the energy we needed forever. You said forever. It was Adele's turn to be contrary. Maybe we can build things up again someday, he said. Never. Why not? Someday. Never. Ask Multivac. You ask Multivac. I dare you. Five dollars says it can't be done. Adele was just drunk enough to try, just sober enough to be able to phrase the necessary symbols and operations into a question which, in words, might have corresponded to this. Will mankind one day, without the next expenditure of energy, be able to restore the sun to its full youthfulness even after it had died of old age? Or maybe it could put, be put more simply like this. How can the net amount of entropy of the universe be massively decreased? Multivac fell dead and silent. The slow flashing of light ceased. The distant sounds of ticking relays ended. Then, just as the frightened technicians felt they could hold their breath no longer, there was a sudden springing to life of the teletype attached to that portion of Multivac. Five words were printed. Insufficient data for meaningful answer. No bet, whispered Lupov. They left hurriedly. By next morning, the two, plagued with throbbing head and cottony mouth, had forgotten about the incident. Jared, Jaredine, and Jared at one and two watched the starry picture on the visiplate change as the passage through hyperspace was completed in its non-time lapse. At once, the even powdering of stars gave way to the predominance of a single bright marble disk centered. That's X-23, said Jared confidently. His thin hands clamped tightly behind his back and the knuckles whitened. The little Jaredettes, both girls, had experienced the hyperspace passage for the first time in their lives and were self-conscious over the momentary sensation of inside-outness. They buried their giggles and chased one another wildly about their mother, screaming, We've reached X-23! We've reached X-23! We've quiet children, said Jaredine sharply. Are you sure, Jared? What is there to be but sure, asked Jared, glancing up at the bulge of featureless metal just under the ceiling. It ran the length of the room, disappearing through the wall at either end. It was as long as the ship. Jared scarcely knew a thing about the thick rod of metal, except that it was called a microvac. That one asked it questions if one wished, that if one did not, it still had its task of guiding the ship to a pre-ordered destination, of feeding on energies from the various subgalactic power stations, of computing the equations for the hyperspatial jumps. Jared and his family, had only to wait and live in the comfortable residence quarters of the ship. Someone had once told Jared that the AC at the end of Microvac stood for analog computer in ancient English, but he was on the edge of forgetting even that. Jaredine's eyes were moist as she watched the busy plate. I can't help it. I feel funny about leaving Earth. Why, for Pete's sake, demanded Jared. We had nothing there. We'll have everything on X-23. We won't be alone. You won't be a pioneer. There are over a million people on the planet already. Good Lord, our great-grandchildren will be looking for new worlds, 
because X23 will be overcrowded. Then after a reflective pause, I tell you, it's a lucky thing the computers worked out interstellar travel the way the race is going. I know, I know, said Jerry Dean miserably. Jared at one said promptly, our microvac is the best microvac in the world. I think so too, said Jared, tousling our hair. It was a nice feeling to have a microvac of your own and Jared was glad he was part of his generation and no other. In his father's youth, the only computers had been tremendous machines taking up a hundred square miles of land. There was only one to a planet, planetary ACs they were called. They had been growing in size steadily for a thousand years and then all at once came refinement. In place of transistors had come molecular valves so that even the largest planetary AC could be put into a space, only half the volume of a spaceship. Jared felt uplifted as he always did when he thought that his own personal microvac was many times more complicated than the ancient and primitive multivac that at first tamed the sun and almost as complicated as Earth's planetary AC, the largest, that at first solved the problem of hyperspatial travel and had many trips to the stars possible. So many stars, so many planets, sighed Geraldine, busy with her own thoughts. I suppose families will be going out to new planets forever the way we are now. Not forever, said Jared with a smile. It will all stop someday, but not for billions of years, many billions. Even the stars run down, you know. Entropy must increase. What's entropy, Daddy? Shrilled Jared at two. Entropy, little sweet, is just a word which means the amount of running down of the universe. Everything runs down, you know, like your little walkie-talkie robot, remember? Can't you just put in a new power unit, like with my robot? The stars are the power units, dear. Once they're gone, there are no more power units. Jared at one, at one set up a howl. Don't let them, Daddy. Don't let the stars run down. Now look what you've done, whispered Geraldine, exasperated. How was I to know it would frighten them? Gerard whispered back. Ask the microvac, wailed Jared one. Ask him how to turn the stars on again. Go ahead, said Geraldine. It'll quieten them, it'll quiet them down. Jared too was beginning to cry also. Jared struggled. Now, now, honeys, I'll ask microvac. Don't worry, he'll tell us. He asked the microvac, but adding quickly, print the answer. Jared cupped the strip of thin cellophane and said cheerfully, see now, the microvac says, microvac says it will take care of everything when the time comes, so don't worry. Geraldine said, and now children, it's time for bed. We'll be in our new home soon. Jared read the words of the cellophane again before destroying it. Insufficient data for a meaningful answer. He shrugged and looked at the visit plate. X-23 was just ahead. VJ23X of Lamet stared into the black depths of the three-dimensional small-scale map of the galaxy and said, are we ridiculous, I wonder, in being so concerned about the matter? MQ17J of Nikron shook his head. I think not. You know, the galaxy will be filled in five years at the present rate of expansion. Both seemed in their early 20s, both were tall and perfectly formed. Still, said VJ23X, I hesitate to submit a pessimistic report to the Galactic Council. I wouldn't consider any other kind of report. Stir them up a bit. We've got to stir them up. VJ 23X side. Space is infinite. A hundred billion galaxies are there for the taking. More. A hundred billion is not infinite. And it's getting less infinite all the time. Consider, 20,000 years ago, mankind first solved the problem of utilizing stellar energy. And a few centuries after, interstellar travel became possible. It took mankind a million years to fill one small world, and then only 15,000 years to fill the rest of the galaxy. Now the population doubles every 10 years, VJ 23X interrupted. We can thank immortality for that. Very well, immortality exists and we have to take it into account. I admit it has its seamy side, this immortality. The galactic AC has solved many problems for us, but in solving the problems of preventing old age and death, it has undone all its other solutions. <clears throat> Yet you wouldn't want to abandon life, I suppose. Not at all, snapped MQ-17J, softening it at once to, not yet. I'm by no means old enough. How old are you? 223, and you? I'm still under 200. But to get back to my point, population doubles every 10 years. Once this galaxy is filled, we'll have, filled another, we'll have another filled in 10 years. Another 10 years, 
and we'd have filled two more, another decade, four more. In a hundred years, we'd have filled a thousand galaxies. In a thousand years, a million galaxies. In 10,000 years, the entire known universe. Then what? VJ23X said, as a side issue, there's a problem of transportation. I wonder how many sun power units it will take to move galaxies of individuals from one galaxy to another. A very good point. Already mankind consumes two sun power units per year. Most of it's wasted. After all, our own galaxy alone pours out a thousand sun power units a year, and we only use two of them. Granted. But even with 100% efficiency, we can only stave off the end. Our energy requirements are going up in geometric progression, even faster than our population. We'll run out of energy even sooner than we run out of galaxies. A good point, a very good point. We will just have to build new stars out of interstellar gas or out of dissipated heat, asked MQ17J sarcastically. There may be some way to reverse entropy. We ought to ask the galactic AC. VJ23X was not really serious, but MQ17J pulled out his AC contact from his pocket and placed it on the table before him. I have half a mind to, he said. It's something the human race will have to face someday. He, stayed, he stared somberly at a small AC contact. It was only two inches cubed and nothing in itself, but it was connected through hyperspace with the great galactic AC that served all mankind. Hyperspace considered it was an integral part of the galactic AC. MQ-17J paused to wonder if someday in his immortal life, he would get to see the galactic AC. It was on a little world of its own, a spider webbing of force beams holding the matter within, which surges of sub took the place of the old clumsy molecular valves. Yet despite its sub etheric workings, the galactic AC was known to be a full thousand, full thousand feet across. MQ-17 asked suddenly of his AC contact, can entropy ever be reversed? VJ23X looked startled and said at once, Oh, say, I didn't really mean to have you ask that. Why not? We both know entropy can't be reversed. You can't turn smoke and ash back into a tree. Do you have trees on your world? Asked MQ17J. The sound of the galactic AC startled them into silence. Its voice came thin and beautiful out of the small AC contact on the desk. It said, There is insufficient data for a meaningful answer. VJ23X said, see, the two, two men thereupon returned to the question of the report they were to make to the Galactic Council. Z Prime's mind spanned the new gal galaxy with a faint interest in the countless twists of stars that powdered it. He had never seen this one before. Would he ever see them all? So many of them, each with its load of humanity, but a load that was almost a dead weight. More and more, the real essence of men was to be found out here in space. Minds, not bodies. The immortal bodies remain back on the planets, in suspension over the eon. Sometimes they roused for material activity, but that was growing rarer. Few new individuals were coming into existence to join the incredible mighty throng. But what matter? There was little room in the universe for new individuals. Z Prime was roused out of his reverie upon coming upon, across these wispy tendrils of another mind. I am Z prime, said Z prime. And you? I am D sub one. Your galaxy? We call it only the galaxy. And you? We call ours the same. All men call their galaxy their galaxy and nothing more. Why not? True, since all galaxies are the same. Not all galaxies. On one particular galaxy, the race of man must have originated. That makes it different. Z prime said, on which one? I cannot say. The universal AC would know. Shall we ask him? I am suddenly curious. Z Prime's perceptions broadened until the galaxies themselves shrunk and became a new, more diffuse powdering on a much larger background. So many hundreds of billions of them, all with their immortal beings, all carrying their load of intelligences with minds that drifted freely through space. And yet, one of them was unique among them all, it being the, orig the original's galaxy. One of them had in its vague and distant past, a period when it was the only galaxy populated by men. Z Prime was consummated with curiosity to see this galaxy and called out, Universal AC, on which galaxy did mankind originate? The Universal AC heard, for on every world and throughout space, it had its receptors ready. And each receptor led through hyperspace to some unknown point 
where the university Z kept itself aloof. Z Prime knew of only one man whose thoughts had penetrated within sensing distance of universal AC, and he reported only a shining glow two feet across, difficult to see. But how could that be all of universal AC, Z Prime had asked. Most of it had been the answer, is in hyperspace. In what form it is there, I cannot imagine, nor could anyone. For the day had long since passed, Z Prime knew, when any man had any part in the making of universal AC. Each universal AC designed and constructed its successor. Each, during its existence of a million years or more, accumulated the necessary data to build a better and more intricate, more capable successor in which its own store of data and individuality would be submerged. Universal AC interrupted Z Prime's wandering thoughts, not with words, but with guidance. Z Prime's mentality was guided into the dim sea of galaxies and one in particular enlarged into stars. A thought came infinitely distant, but infinitely clear. This is the original galaxy of man. But it was the same after all, the same as any other, and Z Prime stifled his disappointment. The sub one, whose mind had accompanied the other, said suddenly, and is one of these stars the original star of man? The universal AC said, man's original star has gone nova. It is now a white dwarf. Did the men upon it die? Asked Z Prime, startled and without thinking. The universal AC said, a new world, as in such cases, was constructed for their physical bodies in time. Yes, of course, said Z Prime. But a sense of loss overwhelmed him ever, even so. His mind released its hold on the original galaxy of man, let it spring back and lose itself among the blurred pinpoints. He never wanted to see it again. The sub one said, what is wrong? The stars are dying. The original star is dead. They must all die. Why not? But when all energy is gone, our bodies will finally die, and you and I with them. It will take billions of years. I do not wish it to happen, even after billions of years. Universal AC, how many stars may be kept from dying? D sub one said in amusement. You're asking how entropy might be reversed in direction. And the universal AC answered. There is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. Z Prime's thoughts fled back to his own galaxy. He gave no further thought to D sub one, whose body might be waiting on a galaxy a trillion light years away or on the star next to Z Prime zone. It didn't matter. Unhappily, Z Prime began collecting interstellar hydrogen out of which to build a small star of his own. If the stars must die, at least some could yet be built. Man considered with himself for in a way, man mentally was one. He consisted of a trillion, trillion, trillion ageless bodies, each in its place, each resting quiet and incorruptible, each cared for by perfect automatons, equally incorruptible, while the minds of all the bodies freely melted in one into the other, indistinguishable. Man said, the universe is dying. Man looked about at the dimming galaxies, the giant stars, spendthrifts, were, long, were gone long ago, back in the dimmest of the dim far past. Almost all stars were white dwarfs, fading to the end. New stars had been built on the dust, built of the dust between the stars, some by natural processes, some by man himself, and those were going too. White dwarfs might yet be crashed together, and of the mighty forces so released, new stars built. But only one star for every thousand white dwarfs destroyed, and those would come to an end too. Man said, Carefully husbanded, as directed by the cosmic AC, the energy that is even yet left in all the universe will last for billions of years. But even so, said man, eventually it will all come to an end. However, it may be husbanded, however stretched out. The energy once expended is gone and cannot be restored. Entropy must increase to the maximum. Man said, can entropy be reversed? Let us ask the cosmic AC. Can entropy not be reversed? Let us ask the cosmic AC. <coughs> the cosmic AC surrounded them, but not in space. Not a fragment of it was in space. It was in hyperspace and made of something that was neither matter nor energy. The question of its size and nature no longer had, me any, had meaning to any terms that man could comprehend. Cosmic AC, said man. How may entropy be reversed? The cosmic AC said, there is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. Man said, 
collect additional data. The cosmic AC said, I will do so. I have been doing so for 100 billion years. My predecessors and I have been asked this question many times. All the data I have remains insufficient. Will there come a time, said man, when data will be sufficient or is the problem insoluble in all conceivable circumstances? The cosmic AC said, no problem is insoluble in all conceivable circumstances. Man said, when will you have enough data to answer the questions? There is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. Will you keep working on it? Asked man. The cosmic AC said, I will. Man said, we shall wait. The stars and galaxies died and snuffed out and space grew black after 10 trillion years of running down. One by man, man fused, one by one man fused with AC, each physical body losing its mental identity in a manner that was somehow not a loss, but a gain. Man's last mind paused before fusion, looking over a space that included nothing but the dregs of one last dark star and nothing besides, but incredibly thin matter, agitated randomly by the tag ends of heat wearing out, asymptomatically, asymptotically to the absolute zero. Man said, AC, is this the end? Can this chaos not be reversed into the universe once more? Can that not be done? AC said, there is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. Man's last mind fused and only AC existed and that in hyperspace. Matter and energy had ended and with it space and time. Even AC existed only for the sake of the one last question that it had never answered from the time a half drunken computer 10 trillion years before had asked the question of a computer that was to AC far less than was a man to man. All other questions had been answered and until this last question was answered also, AC might not release his consciousness. All collected data had come to a final end. Nothing was left to be collected, but all collected data had yet to be completely correlated and put together in all possible relationships. A timeless interval was spent in doing that. And it came to pass that AC learned how to reverse the direction of entropy. But there was now no man to whom AC might give the answer of the last question, no matter. The answer by demonstration would take care of that too. For another timeless interval, AC thought how best to do this. Carefully, AC organized the program. The consciousness of AC encompassed all of what had once been a universe and brooded over what was now chaos. Step by step, it must be done. And AC said, let there be light. And there was light. Thank you for reading it. Longer than I remember when I read it to myself. <laughs> Reading out loud. I read it so many times. I was, <laughs> I forgot. I had to scroll. <laughs> God, it's got so many layers. The story, doesn't it? Yeah. It speaks to. It has. It speaks to so many themes. To. Also, it has biases of his time too. I'll talk about yeah. it later. I read an interview, not an interview, he gave a small intro to this, one of these, one, there's a version of this online and there's an intro by him where he says that you know, of all the stories, this is his most personal or his most favorite. And yeah. people keep coming up to him asking him, did you write this? Did you write this? They just know the story and they don't know who wrote it. And he says, I'm happy that people know the story and not who wrote it because that's the whole purpose of the story. Just before we <laughs> go into the discussion, I have an anecdote here yeah. by him. Can you see this? Yes. Why is it my favorite? For one thing, I got the idea all at once and didn't have to fiddle with it. And I wrote it in white heat and scarcely had to change a word. This sort of thing endures any story to any writer. Then too, it has had the strangest effect on my readers. Frequency, frequently someone writes to ask me if I can give them the name of a story, which they think I may have written and tell them where to find it. They don't remember the title, but when they describe the story, it is invariably the last question. <laughs> This had reached the point where I recently received a long distance phone call from a desperate man who began, Dr. Asimov, there's a story I think you wrote whose title I can't remember. At which point I interrupted to tell him it was the last question. And when I described the plot, it pro proved to be indeed the story he was after. 
I left him convinced I could read minds at a distance of a thousand miles. Wow, that's what what an impact the story has had to yeah. everyone who's read it, right? It's first of its kind. You, you might have come across some other other version of the same kind of a story. I don't think uh, I have. I, I mean, I I don't read that much science fiction, but this story is unique. Yeah. I mean, it's it's got a religious ending, yeah. you know. And you don't expect him because yeah. he's such a staunch atheist. <laughs> no, he goes not atheist. It's not it's not theist. It's not theist. It, it's in a world where there's nothing, right? Forget yeah. The, oh man, there's nothing. So it's it's yeah. literally birthing God at the end, right? With yeah, correct. Lines from the Genesis. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go around the room. Uh, see what everybody thought. Uh, Swati, you just read it, right? What are your I, first impressions? Yes, um, I read it right now, and um, initially I was thinking of mitochondria and how they've hijacked our bodies and how they. I was just thinking of at a different level, uh, not as the humans as mitochondria and how they are uh, hijacking us and maybe. The DNA of the of uh, the human body is like uh, like uh, microvac or something. I was just thinking, comparing over the various things. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it overall. I'm not exactly sure what else to say. <laughs> Next question. Anuradha, you've read Asimov before, right? Yeah, I've been just mostly short stories only. Have you read this I read before? like one of his books, uh, Caves of Steel. I didn't enjoy it as much as the short story, so I stopped there. Have you read this one before? No, not this one. What did you think about it? So the first time I was reading it, I wasn't really, I wasn't expecting this. So I thought it would end differently, or they'd find a way to harness energy or something. Mm -hmm. And then you read it once, you think it's about one thing, right? You think, oh, this is all about um, them finding solutions to this problem, going into space, whatever. And then you realize, oh, this is actually how God is created. And then you come back and read it and you realize, oh, this is like you read it again and you realize, oh, this, this computer is slowly becoming God. And that's amazing. Then I started realizing that, oh, first it, it's just all knowing and then suddenly it's everywhere. And suddenly they're pretty much going to it for their solutions the way you would go to God. And and they become one with it at the end of the world. And it's God now. And that's not yeah. and it, 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 that's what I found cool about it. And it also begins, how kind of circular it is that yeah. he creates the universe from the world ends and then they create the universe from the beginning. And I'd like to think oh the yeah, the world begins again there. Kind of a hopeful end, right? <laughs> yeah. Science fiction doesn't what, have many hopeful endings. Yeah, you don't think of the end of the universe in a hopeful way. I always yeah. think of it as something horrible and terrifying. And like, I think anyone would. Everyone in this book also thinks that we're scared of the end of the universe. Yeah. And it's cool that they, um, the, one of the coolest parts I found was that uh, the family is Jared, Jaredine, Jaredette. Jared. They, uh, they oh, multi -vac will take care of it. And he does. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone, every generation or everyone has that silver bullet, right? They, they're the point after which they think that these things will be taken care of. I think that, and that talks, yeah, that, that story kind of, it talks about people going to other worlds for a better life. And this has so, even now, I mean, this is the third time I'm reading it. It's, there's so many layers to it. Yeah. Even the God bit, right? It begins because it, it starts with 2061, right? And before that, a significant time when Asimov was writing it, people, and before before that period too, people depended on God for the answers, right? During his time, it was when people turned towards science during forty during the early early twentieth century. People turned towards science, and it's kind of funny that it all came comes back, and this thing that you are answering to is becoming a God, basically. So that's I love how, even though it's completely unexpected, after you've read it, it's then you think this has to, this had to be the conclusion of the story, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, it's I, totally unexpected, but it's not a twist. 
It's not a gimmick yeah. twist that way, you it know. It is actually going towards it throughout the whole story. Yeah, he tells you entropy and yeah. yeah. don't think it has to be like, but you never do, right? Yeah. Also, I'm sorry for the second story in a row that I've brought that has the heat death of the universe and entropy in it. <laughs> There's definitely so, a theme there. Yeah. Theme there. I'll have to complete the trilogy now. <laughs> is there is a trilogy? You find one, yeah. Yeah. This yeah, uh let's go to someone else. Agiriza, you've read this before? Yeah, I read it in the morning. Uh, okay. I would say I skimmed to it. I think this, this is one of those stories that needs you to uh sit down, take your time, chop it a little bit, <laughs> dissect it. It took yeah, and I, I didn't have enough time to, you know, do that, but I did skim through it. And I think right now I try to understand a little better. Um, what was interesting for me is the loss of identity, like even with the nomenclature, like Jerome and Gerard or whatever those names yeah, are, Gerard, like even yeah. the, the the daughters are the sort of versions of the yeah, parents, yeah. Uh, like one and two. <laughs> yeah. So that was very interesting, like, uh, and the whole mind and body, I think there's so many connections you can form with I mean right now I can't think of it but when it comes to philosophy uh, with the whole mind and the body I'm sure like there's uh, you know if, if I read something that can analyze this better I'll be sure to share it right now nothing comes to my mind but the whole loss of identity was interesting but also the, the reliance on technology and I think that happens to us yeah. you know when we rely too much on technology to remember things for us we start forgetting um, so yeah, I, I found like themes that are quite contemporary, even if it's like a science fiction, yeah. a lot of stuff is something that I, I could relate to. Um, like there was this one thing he says he was on the edge of forgetting that then minds of all the bodies freely melted one into the other indistinguishable. Yeah. So it's almost like one mind, lots of bodies. That was very interesting. Like there's a lot there. I'm yet to understand that fully. <laughs> There's a, I, I, that point you mentioned, right? There's a lot of chipping away at humanity happening. But you begin with two people like us, right? These are, even in 2061, which is 20 years from now, uh, 40 years from now, these are people like us, the, uh, the initial two guys, the researchers yeah. who are drinking, right? But then the humanity starts going and you kind of see it in their conversation and their names, mainly their names. Uh, the yeah. names are becoming more copy-paste. Correct. Kind of. yeah. So by yeah. the end, there is just one man, one mind left. Yeah, and they're like, you know, which was the original uh, universe yeah. and nobody, yeah. nobody knows that. Like, yeah, that was... Original galaxy, right? The one where yeah. man originated. Correct. Anyone... Uh, for whom the story did not make any sense. I would like to hear their perspective. Someone who's read it for the first time right now. Snehal, you just, uh, you just read it with us, right? Okay. Anita, I Think, did you read this before? Uh, no, Sumit. What did you think about it when uh, Shankar was reading it? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, it's a beautiful, uh, I mean, um, s s a thread of uh, the same question remaining unanswered for gen for billions of years. Sounds like. So. Okay. See, I mean, the end of the universe is the biggest question, right? And yeah. in that sense, it led to that. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful one, and I I want to reread it again because I I I, I was kind of galloping with Shankar, but then galloping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I want to read it at on my own pace later okay. on. It's a really definitely a very good one you brought to us, Sumit, and. Um, I mean, the entropy and enthalpy and all these concepts are there, but uh, you know, like... Uh, hey, you're a scientist, so can you, if, can you explain entropy to us? If you can. 
Entropy is a term in chemistry for the measurement of uh, the disorder in the uh, in the energy yeah. energy system rather. A closed system, right? Yeah. So, so for uh, there's an equation. Is a closed system, right? Yeah, there's an equation where the energy total energy remains constant, and the enthalpy and the uh, temperature and the entropy are linked. Delta H is equal to uh, I forget the equation, but uh, the disorder keeps on increasing on at the cost of enthalpy. Yeah. Decreasing. So. Uh, the entropy of the entire universe is going on increasing and therefore whatever is the uh, planets and the creations will keep on you know dissolving yeah and when i first came across this concept as a student right i i was like how is this it it doesn't uh, it it should end somewhere right because it is like the energy keeps on uh, the energy dissipated in the energy keeps on growing and to distill that concept into a story and multiple people have done it after asimov it's 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 kind of fascinating how they how they do that and in not uh, in a story that's readable <laughs> and it is not a journal uh, yeah. scientific a journal no yeah. a lot of times i think about the end of the universe you know because you know the earth and the sun have a limited life so this kind yeah. of you know uh, question uh, the uh, put the question very properly here in, in yeah. the context of uh, in a, in the form of a good story and he was way ahead of time he died in i think 1992 when i think i mean i don't remember when the actual personal computers came but around 96 when i was typing my phd thesis uh, yeah. they were just beginning there in brc baba yeah. atomic so he was way ahead of time in this yeah, actually because some elements are dated right uh, the technological elements like he couldn't imagine uh, even after thousands of years that uh, computers have shrunken down this to what we are using now after millions of years then it becomes a small cube that you fish out of a pocket two inch or two centimeter cube yeah something something of a cube but uh, but his vision is, uh, is yeah but that's not sort of, i i'm okay with that he the, the i intellectually yeah, yeah, yeah. but he, see how close uh, he comes with certain kinds of things yeah not for not politically or anything because we have gone in different directions exactly at the time yeah yeah but uh, he doesn't he did the, the important thing to note is when you're writing science fiction or even when you're reading science fiction thing about what these writers are trying to get you to imagine because it's not possible to imagine a mindless creature because in the last the z prime and all those these and the man is talking to the ac it's there's no physical form happening there Correct. right just the the one mind is talking to another mind so how do you write that it's it's a fascinating study when you actually go through it Uh, Deepak, you just read it, right, with us? What yeah, did I did. Uh, it was mind-boggling, and actually, the same thing that you just mentioned. What I uh, saw in the story is all about his vision that he was able to see in in that time, nineteen fifty-six, and all the concepts that he is mentioning in that, like AC and all. We are doing that things with our AI, Google and Siri. so it's crazy to think about that maybe it's the beginning with us maybe it will end yeah. up there but he visionized maybe but uh, it's a crazy story i loved it uh, there were no distinct difference uh, there's no space between two passages right there's no uh, yeah. so how was it difficult for you to di uh, distinguish between two sections yes at the start it was yeah. also because, uh, because uh, he was reading at his pace you know and yeah. Well, the name change, name first name change comes suddenly, right? Yeah, first I thought it was like uh, a same year going on and uh, uh, two different stories, but then it went on ahead, and then I realized it's you know, past. But then the time yeah. is happening, and it sets the pace. Originally, it's yeah. also written like this. There is, I think, in this document, there is a space, is some space between uh, two sections. Okay. There is no line or anything. Originally, it was written just as he. He, you understand? It's. 
it uh, it it is not insulting to the reader that way but no, we can we can understand it that much if the characters change maybe the setting is also different yeah it also somehow made me remember george orwell's 1984 mm-hmm. how he visualized that and even his vision is somehow people say coming true with all the um, ai you know surveillance uh, and yeah surveillance in china and all they mean to everything so some people are like great into what they think so i don't the time amazing thanks for sharing this story no problem really yeah uh sini are you Yeah, so much I'm here. Uh, this was a very difficult read when I uh, when I heard Shankar reading it. I was like uh, getting really confused, line after line, and I had to like keep going back and forth. I had to uh, I had the I had downloaded the PDF in the link that you shared. So thankfully, I was trying to read, go back and reread the sentences a bit because I was really not getting the thread. Uh-huh. Uh, but towards the end yeah i got the idea that this is spanning over trillions of years and uh, it's talking about mindless bodies and the new world that is being created for the physical bodies at time and all that was pretty mind boggling it's like uh, i never read this story before and i've not read anything similar at all so it was like really a good uh, read it was very interesting And, and it is very well put together also i mean no extra load of information appears out in plain and everything it, it's uh, it's it's an adventure reading it and figuring it out oh, this is like that and this is this is what it means and all that yeah. and yeah and the and the ending was also really good the let there be light part and yeah really liked it was the technical jargon too much not really i did not was it comes later in, mm-hmm. not in the start it, it i think eases you into it the, the uh, technical the stuff the technical jargon i did not find much of the technical jargon any confusion you need to know all the meanings of all the words yeah, most of them is it's just rubbish this yeah, sub is just, all, <laughs> it's just Like that Christopher Nolan movie thing I sent you, right? They're just using terminologies to. Yeah, yeah. Just it was, to, um, to it was something like try with the plate or something. Yeah, yeah the with the plate or something. So I, uh, so I googled it actually. I was like, okay, let me see what that is, and then I realized that okay, this is so there is something like that. With the plate, there is a new company called with the plate or something like that, and then I realized that okay, so this is something that there are a lot of companies that are mentioned. that has sprung out of this i tried searching for multivac there's a vacuum company has yeah. <laughs> that's yeah yeah. Right, yeah and so the, i think yeah a lot of the, he doesn't he use 23 a few times and people and x23 x23 and the name i don't know what so i thought it is something like is. mac uh, there is a sound of speed right we are achieving mac 3 we are achieving mac 8 and so that is a familiar phrase for me So I thought that it is something x twenty three, something like that. The speed of something times twenty three or something like that. That's the so, sound. It really doesn't have to be real. I think that's the x twenty three in this case is the planet. Is a new planet they're going through. That's yeah, yeah. Planet. I realize it is some uh, distant yeah. arc. But so, uh, I, I don't know the significance of twenty three. The significance of seven I know <laughs> in this because it's the whole thing is based on the. on genesis right on uh, genesis it's 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 a biblical analogy yeah. right so the the story is divided into six sections and it, at the end is seventh day god said let, the first day god said let them play let, let them be light yeah. and and he the seven day god rested right so that's mm. the seven and even in the beginning uh i really so, couldn't Any biblical analogy except the ending? Let there be light. I didn't, really didn't get the six days or anything like that. No, it's because if you read, if you read it again, maybe it's uh, yeah. because yeah, each day something was created. Because uh, in the biblical, correct, correct. say each day something was created, like an animal was created. Correct, uh, correct. um uh, i think the plants I were created the, so i could not get anything anything similar to that i did not at all feel anything about genesis in this i found that this was just the way um the universe was like decaying and how it uh, how the disorder 
increased and decreased in, uh, initially what they uh, Adel and Lupo was asking when it, how to decrease it and then later somebody is asking how to increase it and then again somebody is asking how can we uh, decrease again it is yeah, going actually, back and forth anyway everyone is asking the same question how to re reverse it yeah yeah reverse it uh, how reverse to or reduce it? it how to control uh, it uh, yeah how to control entropy it entropy going towards how to meddle with full it. entropy means that we all die whatever yeah. existed with within us after us before us dies time itself dies so mm -hmm. so they are asking even after they've achieved immortality right at the i think the third or fourth section they achieve yeah. immortality humans yeah even then they have the fear of dying so the fear of dying will never leave yeah. us <laughs> yeah they're saying that uh, yeah then our physical bodies we will cease to exist and uh, it will be all gone shut down and wax so initially I had this feeling okay how is this multi wax still there and um, when everything else is dead so it seems it is a multi wax soul mind right floating and that was a very interesting concept a mind is uh, fluttering into another mind or whatever what is it the flicker the mind. wisp of another mind coming another Speed mind of so that would be a very dangerous situation like if everybody could read the mind or whatever so i was thinking whether it is bordering upon that or but yeah, at uh, that point but anyway that only, is not at 11 only only minds existed at that point so yeah everyone's everyone's mind is free i think the individuality still is there but uh there there's they're still not called at the each of them has has a name Z prime and yeah. Z sub one but they're the, coming into each other's consciousness consciousness yeah. Because uh, the bodies are interfering uh, into yeah, there's some kind of interference. Like you're, they're not uh, because they are meeting each other like that. So that's a very scary thought. So, there's yes, a so I, sorry, go ahead. No, yes. So as I was saying, I did not find anything uh, similar to the genesis of the Bible or anything except the last. Not part, similar. Like, really. The theme is the, it's it's built. You, you were correct in that part. That in every, every iteration, every section, every day, yeah. right, there's something or the other being created. So mm -hmm. one's thing pushes it into the other because these mm -hmm. are the seven instances. These are the uh, six instances where this question was asked. Asked, yeah. Okay. So where they want, where though, they were trying to control the entropy, or where they where yeah. they were in the quest of. Controlling everything, Finding. and finally, multivac does it finds the answer. Actually, uh, just oh. one more thing. After like you mentioned the genesis, just now I thought like in the genesis it is like everything was created uh, at a single day and yeah. it keeps on increasing. But in this story, if I don't know if it's correct or not, we can think of like everything is being uh, cut down one by one. It's being destroyed. First we were physical, and then. You know, man is one. being the opposite, yeah, right. opposite, of, opposite, genesis, opposite, opposite <laughs> of genesis, opposite of genesis. Now it seems to me like that. Opposite. Yeah, I just think the numerical significance of seven is that, but like Sini yeah. said, it's not any sort of mapping to genesis that we are like something. Yeah. Like. And the end too, right? There's yeah, the end is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think the reverse mapping could be there because I think the first yeah. day light was created. So here we have light at the end. And. Yeah. and uh, man was at the end. I think. Just, uh, I, I think he has because Asimov is so, rich, so technical in doing these things. Mm -hmm. uh, these, I think he has mapped it out to her in in the seven days properly, just to fit in that. Yeah. Maybe yeah. also there's one more thing. Yeah. It's like a loop of life. Like it again starts from light and again it will go through this. Correct. Again, we'll create yeah. the computers and we'll the, uh, AIs and we'll again go there. It will keep on looping the life. Yeah. So that's the message. Circle. Once it let there be light, then yeah. it's back to the beginning of time. Back to the beginning and yeah. again the same. Way. Billions of years later, we'll do the same thing again. Right. I think this is read in the church. Sorry, Andhra. Yes, I, uh, I wonder if it starts again. I wonder what will happen um, to the AC. Like, will it still exist or does it give itself into creating the world and does humanity create it again? I the assumption is humanity comes and goes, but does God stay or does God keep going through and waiting to be created? The assumption is this: this has been happening for for all the all of time. All of that's so. Also, this whole whole sequence will happen again and again and again. 
it's kind of depressing but <laughs> yeah. yeah but, but it also what happens to ac then does yeah. it like give it like I, give I it self to create because it says it was yeah. rest or something that the question is answered exactly mm-hmm. maybe and, uh, uh, it has taken all of the energy and now to create the light and other things now it will uh, you know cut himself use that energy use yes. that energy to so when the humanity and everything will be created the world so it will again be vanished just like god maybe humanity is created from the reverse and uh, i think yes. uh, it is comparing the computer to a uh, god yeah, yeah. that's pretty yeah. accurate means you said right if god did not exist we would have to create him so this is kind of we have we have pushed it to god and then god creates us again yeah. i thought this story could be read in like a church in the deep south in front of believers and it could also be read next door in like an uh, rational yeah. atheist meeting and they both yeah. would appreciate it it's like it's so, like john stewart yeah. appeals to both sides yeah <laughs> much brilliant yeah that's true There's a there's a sequel to not a sequel a spiritual sequel kind of to this story uh, called the last answer, oh. where where one man dies and uh, he has a he has an argument with God or something. So oh. Asimov is pretty heavy handed on the <laughs> God thing, even though he's a staunch atheist. Uh, Arun, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Uh, Did you get a chance to read the story? I had. What did uh, I? I read it in the morning, and now I also hard read short most reading. What are your thoughts? Uh, first reading, it is impressive because it is trying to deal with something which is absolutely impossible to deal with, and uh, then then you try to figure out the inconsistencies. then you understand the limitation of the writer and uh, then you say all right you try it so thank you very much can you can you explain on it a bit for example uh, if entropy is increasing according to the uh, second law then how are we creating that consciousness because as far as i understand i understand little i understand uh, very very uh, is that uh, 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 as entropy increases the information in the system is lost so if the information in the system is lost then how we are creating that super consciousness how we are creating those complex things like another star this is a fundamental question what what he meant is that the universe already existed with all these galaxies after supposedly the big bang theory right yes so the galaxies existed yes it is only yeah, the seen... generation of computers and uh, human beings stop are you saying it. the ai is not possible if because entropy increases ai, AI is possible because uh, i mean ai is already possible yeah. we are we are seeing it uh, but uh, that kind of a super consciousness is not possible it can be it is it is if, it, so if information in the system is decreasing if information in the system is decreasing imagine universe as a system a closed system right and information in the system is decreasing and yet there is a consciousness that is increasing it is getting increased in its capacity how is that possible So why do you say information is decreasing? That's the entropy, right? Entropy is is the information. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I don't. Uh, if I'm right, uh, entropy and information, uh, how are they linked? So entropy is has been uh, 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 has been uh, uh, invented uh, while uh, describing engine, and now entropy has gone to many places, even in information theory. i think shannon worked on this so more general uh, more general definition of entropy could be derived from information theory than uh, in physics i believe that i could be wrong okay i read these things long 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 time uh, to to my understanding entropy is purely in thermodynamics right no it is not it started with thermodynamics but then it spanned many areas because it is 
fundamental right one of the fundamental rules that we believe to be fundamental and that is that asima also believed that it is very fundamental so fundamental that it exists it ha it is existing despite uh, despite uh, billions and billions of years passing by Yes, that's the uh, uh, that is that is uh, uh, molecular. Yes, exactly. So you understand, right, Shankar? From here, that molecular disorder that could be that that disorder that could be converted into information. I um, that's where you lose me, and I accept. I not yeah, how how does it uh, equate with uh, with a supercomputer? With a, with a computer that's so so when computer is coming to a conclusion. it must be having more and more information and more and more causal relationship to it right can you come to any conclusion if you cannot have causal information about things you can learn by it searching for it right because if we are if it, 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 it has it can it can search but it will not find it will find not find the causal information that's why, why it has not... it's it's giving the answer right it doesn't have even enough information as of this moment yes it is giving but asimov is assuming that that multivac is converting into a consciousness right a universal consciousness he has assumed that right in this story okay. right so yeah. and that what that consciousness is doing the consciousness is finding all the answers right and there is a one time it happened that it could also understand how Auto entropy reverse. could be reversed but it couldn't find it before trillion years Yeah. it only found it after trillion years so the question here is then is the second law of thermodynamics or the concept of entropy true or not if entropy is true some way then this much of consciousness i mean this amount of consciousness probably could not be created i think it doesn't fully uh... adhere to the second law of thermodynamics simply because the entropy is being reversed at the end right and it is it is not possible to reverse entropy it is going by the assumption and that's why i believe i believe what really happened is what really happened is asimov started with this great ambition okay and then he went ahead and when he was going ahead so for example okay think about another inconsistency when men progress so much that uh, you know they go to another planet then they are even finding immortality yeah. right now think about this concept of immortality what is immortality that you will not die it is not less probable of death okay it is just you will not die so if you will not die on the other hand you will know that universe will end how that is immortality that's a fear right that yeah. they still yeah. have the fear yes. No, uh, so it is not immortal right yeah correct so this is another they figure immortality with in re relation to what humans consider mortality no human considers not to die that's yeah, immortal that's a very easy definition i'm not going to die no matter what yeah. happens uh, let's come back so, from the science so, because so because what what you are really happening is that you know the the probability of dying is decreasing quite a bit correct that is what they are saying immortality but that's not immortality really third thing is that uh, when human beings are progressing that much whether they are going to keep the same english name like you know x23 or yeah. something like that so that's the that's the you know limitation of a writer when he is writing into thousand something or you know but in his time in his time and yeah. it is extremely extremely hard to Uh, conceptualize all those things but he tries and takes us to that that uh, i mean at least make us ask those questions that itself a great achievement yeah i found a lot of inconsistencies with relation to where we are right now like uh, the same thing english language wouldn't survive like this because we haven't we aren't speaking the same english that people were speaking 100 150 years ago so how will we speak it the same way uh, thousand million years later so and even uh, uh, the gender roles too they primarily men in the story 
whole all uh, except for the end where uh, the, uh, there is no no there aren't any pronouns used z prime and b sub one that part they are, they just go with their names but it's mostly mostly men and it's understandable because it it is written in that time uh, even even the family structure thousands of years later the gerard gerard that family structure is the family structure that was the that is here in the 20th and 21st century that that i had noted down but it doesn't change a lot of i i didn't find inconsistencies in the entropy the, the entropy information thing that you mentioned but i did find it in various uh, different aspects so coming back to the writing uh chaitali is here devika's ipad is chaitali i am assuming yes so uh so i don't read sci-fi as much as you so um, i think uh, at least on the surface level i enjoyed it though not as much as you people are geeking out on it so <laughs> from a um, purely craft point of view i even though i understood everything i just found that i needed to, like there's no way for me to connect with the characters most of it was Correct. intellectual processing Correct. so that's the only uh, sort of uh, drawback that i felt in this and that is my uh, sort of uh, rant against like too high fi or sci fi uh, sort of stuff so yeah. maybe that's but uh, purely from a story point of view i enjoyed it yeah um i agree i agree with the craft point i was when i was when i first read it like a couple of years ago i was i was blown away by it aisa kaisa likh sakta hai koi when i read it this time around right i felt because i'm reading a bit more into characters character work and uh, how people what people think and there is a lot of good books since so i i felt that a bit uh, that was a bit of that was a shortcoming of his i feel at least in this story i i've read his books the foundation books i they, they, they don't appeal to me they that too too hard sci-fi doesn't appeal to me it, it goes too much into technical thing and it forgets story it forgets characters it it uh, it then just becomes a manual for, for yeah that is what sort of purely put me off sci-fi but since then i've seen some pieces which do follow or sort of i'm still invested in it i think yeah. some stories they're just too uh, sciency and not enough carry of uh, human based emotions for me to sort of connect yeah. with the story so that's the only thing i really missed in this otherwise from a craft point of view see here it's easy for us to judge okay he didn't guess this right but he was a writer yeah. not uh, some astrology or jyotish ki or this is how it's going to be so <laughs> from a story or a sort of technical aspect of as far as the science goes i think we can give him the benefit of doubt he guessed a lot of it right and some of it not even scientists are not that accurate in predicting so to learn from it i think central structure i don't think we can maybe the later later chapters how to write when you don't have a body <laughs> some kind of so i think that that maybe you can learn but sentence level i don't think you can learn that much from uh, this because it's it's basic uh, you can you can you, you you guys can write like this if uh, you want to write a conversation between two people what i find found fascinating was it was the same conversation that we had across six uh, sections right same conversation how to mold different how to mold it differently each time i find i found that fascinating uh, with the dialogues and what and to distill a concept that's hard for people to understand into something that they that they already know 
like something like a family structure something like a simple conversation same conversation happening again and again starting from a simple thing and then complicating it a bit more bit more bit more until you reach what is the death slash beginning of a universe so i found that fascinating yeah i think the structure wise structure wise you might find more stories like this now but i think at this at his time since it's so complex even for us now it's difficult to understand unless in mental and since so much has been written about it right so i think for that time the structure worked very well it might seem very familiar to us now but i think uh, structure choice was uh, good at least i feel for the, just for the simplicity of it that repetition i'll just share this slide as me can you see my screen yeah okay i try try to map out the the various leaps that he takes first is the multivac if anyone has problem <laughs> understanding how the story progresses this is Uh, how I understood. Multivac. These two people talking. The question is more the same across. How can entropy be reversed? The the question doesn't change. It is asked in different forms, but the question doesn't change. The I found the names as Girija mentioned. They they keep on. It's chipping away at the humanity. That's that I found just from the names. Uh, conversation ठीक है it's it's a bit more human conversation than uh, we suppose will happen millions of uh, years later but uh, we we still have to understand it in our language right? so i'll give him the benefit of the doubt so yeah and the and at the end there is light i think we can anyone has any thoughts so for me uh, overall i was the only way i can process several generations is thinking of bacteria because uh, you know we see bacteria in our life span you know several, many thousands uh, crores of generations we can see them so that's why i guess i immediately started thinking of bacteria and then i was thinking of how uh, watching them perhaps develop into uh eukaryotes and then uh, uh, multicellular organisms that's what existed back then uh i'm sorry i go ahead i i have something else to do i'm sorry uh what do you think we can learn anything from this absolutely not just an entertaining story absolutely absolutely this yeah it's a, it's a seminal story there is no doubt it is it is yeah it is i, I, I mean posing a very big question in physics you know the end of the universe many people have asked it since then right with the the story i did before this literally had the same same topic the heat death of the universe and the entropy but it was it was a bit more personal that i was it a, a bit better i like this one better because it is asking harder question much harder question and it is almost impossible to you know have a resolution so i understand why asimov uh, took refuge in the bible is, yeah. yeah there is no other way we can very difficult yeah because of what happens you know when you it, gen right. yeah generation after generation you make things uh, far more grand right yeah. and then where you go where you go from there i mean think about as a plot line right as a right you were thinking about the plot right and you were thinking okay i understand i understand 50 years later what is going to happen i can assume it or right? i can i can kind of foretell it okay i'll, I'll go wrong but i can foretell it. what is going to happen 200 years later it gets far far more complex what is going to happen 2000 years later what is going to happen 20000 years later all right i still can assume it is going to be most probably wrong but still i can assume 
but I'm not only assuming 20,000, but I'm assuming trillions of years yeah. later, billions of years later, I believe, or trillions, I don't remember exactly. Trillions, trillions. Trillions of years trillions, later. Man. Trillions of years later. I mean, even we shouldn't try. Yeah, but if if but if we don't try, then if we don't try, then what happens? So we have to try, no matter how, how wrong we are, we have to try. So, yeah, but then how the resolution will come? Mm, very difficult, very difficult. I found it quite easy to make make a few of the assumptions he was making, like from names to going to man. I was just thinking that previously tailoring used to be personalized to each and every person, and already it's, you know we just buy one size, so it's you don't have to a tailor doesn't think of a, of me when they're tailoring something. It's just one size that they're making. People will buy whatever. So already that is happening. Uh, no, but but actually in civilization, whatever, if we look at civilization, look at our civilization, what is really happening, probably, probably what is really happening is that from more collective, we are becoming more individualized, though there are some uh, activities or some uh, movements are happening that 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 wish that, you know, wish us to again be collective, but I don't know how, how much these uh, movements are going to be successful in the long run. Let's see. Uh, very difficult to predict. Organization by itself to remove some of the uh, personalization, right? Just by industrialization. Sorry. Maybe it was written in that, that part, right? Because the industrialization, uh, maybe because it was being mass produced and maybe even he thought that way. I For me, the... Chipping away of individuality is the most scariest part in the story. Uh, not the. But will eventual. that will that will that happen? Do you believe that uh, I, with industrialization, individualization? I mean, whether the individuality got uh, got. Uh, I mean, individuality was more uh, encouraged or discouraged. With, uh, with how I am looking at life and the future from my perspective i don't think that will happen that individual uh, it, it would be pretty dystopian for, for me Bef before that be before that just think about this question okay just think about this specific question because of industrialization individuality got encouraged or discouraged or discouraged right you have to uh, wear one kinds of clothes you have to uh, come at the office a particular time and what was happening beforehand? So in, in agricultural society or hunter-gatherer society, what was happening? Are they going Family to- Family clusters, go, right. But, but, but are they going to hunting at uh, different times? No. no. So, no. They had the same. But you still had some autonomy. On Where? It, right? Where? How come? Where? So if your, if your tribe is going for a hunt, you are also going for a hunt. Anita, what are you trying to say? Just let me know when you're sharing. Right? Can you see it now? Sorry, I've stopped the share. You were not saying anything. Okay. We are, let's not go there. Let's hey, not go story, to, um, to we that end. Up, yeah. We can talk about it. Because there's a lot to talk about the in this story. Do you think there's also a message about uh, my, 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 this is way early in the 50s before we started thinking about uh, depleting the resources of the planet. So, I mean, now it's become very common, right? It's, it's, it's kind of it's the go-to environmental issue in any story if you want to have an issue. But Asimov was maybe ahead of his time in, in tapping out that we're going to, you know, utilize all these resources and I love how right at the beginning when the two guys are talking and one guy says forever and the other guy jumps on forever. And that's a, mm -hmm. that's a pure puritanical way of looking at the meaning of the word forever. It'll be there for a billion years. It's still not forever. And then he says, yeah. um, it'll be there longer than we will. And he says, but in that case, so will fuel and coal, right? So then that is, to me, that's a definition of how you can look at something as a selfish person, right? Yeah. You know, it'll be there till I'm dead, then what do I care about? So if you're going to think like that, then you shouldn't be getting into something like science, which has to be basically a, a kind of a selfless occupation. You know, in a more, 
the best definition of the word i would say so i think he does that and it, when it comes again later when they say after billions of years what's happened and that is the when you are you're looking at it purely from the theoretical point of view it's happening can you fix it instead of saying it's happening it won't affect me in my lifetime so i don't need to fix it it's not really for that's not the question here you change the question to 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 make yourself sleep better at night over what i like that about the the rigidity of that second guy saying it's not forever you know and to to show how hard it is to imagine something yeah, even yeah. even 10000 because a million seconds is like 13 days right correct but a billion seconds is 84 years so it's <laughs> that that time frame are there other stories like that where the question is the exact same and the characters are just evolving or changing are there many if it's there maybe it, it's a uh, it it must have been inspired from this i don't i don't remember this i think this might be the first of it i don't know enough about science fiction to be honest yeah. i i read very only certain people recommend it to me very strongly i didn't take a look at it otherwise it's just going to be there are many stories where the ai becomes god uh, that's not yeah. that's Ed not unfathom god god oh that's not unfathom i believe in science fiction at least that it it happens a lot maybe this was the genesis <laughs> genesis of it yeah. <laughs> god is just a name you give something right some power at which power, you yeah. exceed responsibility and the like so people all these hardcore rationalists and science people who they they are as they can be as rigid in their beliefs as religious the religious right can be in christ and in god too right i mean like, in the eleven page uh, how many times have the same words sentences been repeated and get the story works <laughs> yeah the same question has been repeated six same times. conversation is happening six times yeah, almost, same conversation almost. Almost. almost the same conversation yeah. okay yeah. and it is it is one person allaying the fears of other person by asking the computer that's the same same format is happening all six times but it is from a craft level at least it is quite fascinating how you he's managed to pull that off by not being a totally boring but throwing the reader off is that because of the shock value of the end is that because of the shock value because we're still thinking of what life might be after maybe in our training years we've not thought about it and maybe maybe because the different forms that humanity takes uh throughout the story right maybe that's that's the novel factor in each of the Like yeah, I think you're just having fun there. You know, just yeah. imagining out. Okay, thoughts talk to thoughts, minds talk to minds. You know, where the whole part can I go? And that's the AC also changes form. Yeah. Uh, every <laughs> every one day. thing is the one thing is Chappy is that it, it, it's beyond space. Sorry, Arun. Yeah. It's an old craft. It's a circular craft. It has right. been used in our Purana, Puranas also. It has been used in uh, old testament also. That it has been told to this person. This person has been you know. It has been told by. uh his predecessor you know this uh, uh his ancestors and by his ancestors by his ancestors it has been it has been in the uh, old testament it is in puranas so that's a little different right you're saying a message or a, a truth is being passed down yes but where can it's flipping here in the story in terms of throughout the ages i don't want to ages there must be a bigger word throughout the aeons people are kind of grasping with the same fundamental question even after they they realized even in the very first story they realized that it is not a problem that's going to affect them and it's not going to affect anyone in the foreseeable future even i think in the very beginning they talk about 20 billion years whatever right so, so it's not something that's of immediate urgency it's not armageddon where bruce willis has to do it in 18 days or whatever right? they have a little bit of that but it's still the that... question keeps coming so that is also i think that's a comment on the the repetition of nature of our questions as human beings and well, in their reality it's the the computer has an answer to everything correct and they but I, i'm also i'm also a bit uh, i don't know how are they not that surprised when the computer doesn't know the answer because if it knows everything right and it doesn't know the answer that must surprise them a bit more not, they, they 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 take it casually they kind of take it casually I'm, i mean because they were drunk <laughs> the first one so first guys they if, yeah, if they, they are if they are scientific minded if they are managing that computer 
and if they are somehow involved in the making of the computer they will know that there are some question that will not be answered they were uh, not involved in the making but only the, the first two guys right only well, the first two guys weren't involved in the making of the computer they were involved in harnessing the energy of the sun and the computer was being uh, made, made for decades and decades before the no, but the first two guys, in... doesn't it say that for the first two guys if as much as someone could know about it they know or something like that there is some phrase yeah. like that right? about it right not of it but yeah maybe maybe i don't know but i think i'm the future they did story not make it they yeah. did not make it mm. and in the future story is just people living i mean they're yeah flipping through the hyperspace and the with their kids and and uh, at the power the, the theme of the power is never enough or and even after achieving immortality people are not stopping have stopped breeding they are just popping out kids because it the fundamental nature of humans to take care of someone else other than themselves after a certain point it would get boring to live with yourself mm. i thought that that print out that comes out from the computer is, is synonymous to religious text right it, you know we know certain things but we don't know this much and this is going to give us the answer and even if the answer is i don't have enough data that's fine i now i can say it strongly because even the computer doesn't know it's like god coming down and saying i don't know how long you're going to live fine if you don't know i'm okay not knowing is that kind of stuff yeah there's a lot of layers to the story it's one of the and i just thought mind entering other minds i mean today we're almost doing that right i mean isaac asimov would not have thought that we would be sitting here chatting together writing in each other's uh, stories collaboratively at the same time in real time <laughs> we're almost yeah. doing that we don't have to wait billions or trillions of years <laughs> not minds necessarily but out isaac is asimov already conceptualized internet and internet education isaac asimov has given us the laws of robotics which he said that he is going to be extremely proud of and if if he was asked that if he i mean for some reason if people forget all his contributions for what they will remember that the robots will be told that they cannot harm human beings they i mean he he formulated three laws so he he had that even He's in a visionary, uh, there is no doubt about it even in foundation right the the there's a totalitarian I, i don't remember that much there's a totalitarian regiment that wants to control everything and there's a rebel faction and the only thing they are striving to protect is the information that that the foundation that the uh, totalitarian regiment wants to destroy because if you destroy information of all the previous years that you have collected you, you basically have control over the life so so information is key in earning an individual's freedom i think that was also the main thing so uh, anyone has any thoughts we'll take a picture now and uh, i have a few quick writing session a uh, writing exercise I had something to share, so I'm just a minute. So okay. I was going over the last part, so the एकदम last page. So he, the AC, finds the answer. He's still bent on finding the answer even when there is nobody asking him. So the last man's uh, mind has also been fused with the AC. So there's nobody asking him the answer, but he's still so intensely searching for the answer, even by demonstration. all the other questions had been answered and until this last question was answered ac might not release his consciousness so was that the only thing that was preventing him from also going extinct and dying and so i found that really interesting maybe 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 that's why it also helped humanity in continuing right because yeah in continuing that was the, the question yeah to find the answer to the question curiosity Anita Sini Sheetal Devika can you turn on your cameras Oh, sorry shankar my camera is refusing to work so okay i'm logged in from my laptop okay sini shita 
I'm really trying to, but it's not responding. Hmm. Wait, you come back. One of the questions that Sumit asked us when he sent this out was, would you write something like this? And I can say that not in a million years. I don't have the imagination or the inquisitiveness, I guess, to write about beyond my time kind of things. And I can barely write about my time. <laughs> it's tough enough for me to be interested in next year, let alone a billion years. And once I can't comprehend it, it becomes that much tougher for me to write about it. Hi, Smith. Uh, Sheetal, can you turn on? Audible now? Yes, you are. Okay. Anita can't turn on the camera. Sheetal has not been able to turn on a camera. Just take the photo now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah Sumit, I think we only have a few minutes left. So you had some questions and exercises and all of that. Just add a small writing exercise if we have the time. Just write about the death of the universe in seven sentences. It doesn't have to be a list format because uh, I've seen people do a list format. When, uh, when exercises like these are proposed. So it, a paragraph is fine. If you want to do a list format, do a list format. Uh, try varying sentence lengths. And uh, yeah, these are the only constraints. If you want, I'll paste it in the chat. How much time do we have to write this? You have seven, seven minutes. minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's keep it seven. So stay with that theme. Yeah, seven. stay with the theme. Uh -huh. All right. I just know Arun is going to come out with this amazing 500 word piece which he just wrote off the top of his head and just. Can you share the screen? I mean, I can't see it. So, did you put it in the chat? Yeah. I can't see it. It's just right. It's right. About the depth of the universe in seven sentences. It can go anywhere. Like you just don't have to stick with science fiction or anything. Just think about this one. Light about the death of the universe in seven sentences. Okay. We'll be back in seven minutes. <laughs>